In 2019, Uber made an interesting statement. This is probably one of the best videos that I've seen uh, covering Uber. And they basically straight out say that they aim to lower incentives for drivers and drivers will be unhappy. Straight up. It's all about the investor. Ladies and gentlemen, share, share, and share on social media. Here it is. Uber made an interesting statement. The statement was in an S1, a mandatory document for companies going public. It offers the first detailed look at their finances, and it's Uber's opportunity to convince the public why they should invest with it. If you read through it, you'll see big plans for driverless cars. You'll see profit and loss statements. Dive into the risk section, and it's more than a warning about potential pitfalls. If you look closely, you'll find Uber's plan to make profit hidden in plain sight. As we aim to reduce driver incentives to improve our financial performance, we expect driver dissatisfaction will... As we aim to reduce driver incentives to improve our financial inf uh, performance, we expect driver dissatisfaction will generally increase. That's what's happening right now, straight from Dara Khosrowshahi's mouth. My friends, we declare war. Yep, you heard me say that. We now have to fight back, and we do that through social media. So all the trash, all the trip radar, all the crap, start talking to the public. Dear public, dear rider, look at this. Dear public, dear rider, look at this. Add to it, dear legislator, dear politician, dear rider, dear public, look at this. Get the information out, ladies and gentlemen. Get it out on steroids. Really increase. Translation, we plan to turn a profit by paying drivers less. In 2023, if we plan to turn a profit by paying drivers less. This is how Dara Koshrashawi rolls. Finally happened. After losing $33 billion, Uber turned an operating profit for the first time in company history. The stock price doubled. This milestone made headlines and management took a victory lap. It's the amalgamation of a ton of work and we plan to be profitable for, you know, every quarter going forward. Management said the profit came from diversifying into food delivery and freight. They dropped some buzzwords about innovation and efficiency, but there's a growing chorus of major business school professors who have a much more simpler explanation. One that calls back to Uber's original stock filing. Those profits came directly from a driver's cut of each ride. So who's right? Well, let's take a look at the evidence, the academic research, the financial statements, and we can understand why Uber could now view controlling this debate just as important as their app functioning. Because if the truth gets out, Uber's profits could be in serious trouble. In the early days, Uber used investment capital to subsidize driver pay and passenger fares. This is Mariah Montgomery. She's the national campaign director at Power Switch Action. And we're working alongside rideshare drivers in different cities who are fighting for better standards and um, more protection on the job. When the company started, Uber lost money on every ride. Your ride was cheaper and the driver made more because investors subsidized everything. Some analysts believe that investors paid for 40% of every ride because they were trying to capture what they call a liquidity network effect. Basically, they were trying to build a big network full of riders and drivers and it worked. But now that the company is public, their demand isn't for scale, it's for profit. Uber has 75% of the ride hail market nationally now, and they have taken advantage of that as demands from investors have changed. I think that the era of, of pricing of fighting purely based on price is over, right? That was three, four years ago when it was just about volume, but investors now want profitable volume. And if the only thing you have to offer is a lower price, you're not offering much ultimately. In December 2023, Columbia Business School professor Len Sherman started crunching. My friends, you remember this hero who outed Uber and how they went nuts, how they attacked Forbes to the point that they made the Forbes take down the article. He fought back. This is our hero, right? This is our hero. Working with reliable third-party data, you found that Uber's profitability was easily explainable if you were willing to admit something unsaid in polite circles. Basically, Uber was charging consumers more and paying drivers less. 
The charging more was obvious. Like nearly every other company, Uber raised prices throughout the pandemic, way more than inflation. Fares are up 65% since Uber went public. But proving that Uber was paying drivers less was tricky because management hardly gave clear answers. According to Sherman's analysis, at the start of 2022, the average fare was about $21. What Uber takes from drivers. I just got this t-shirt, ladies and gentlemen. Busy stealing money, right? Busy stealing money. Uh, Dara and David. Warm regards, Dara and David. Busy stealing money. That's exactly what this is about. With the driver earning a little over 13. That means that Uber took home the remaining amount or 35%. By 2023, the average fare was up to over $21. The drivers, they were making less. Uber's take increased to over 40%. How did they pull it off? Well, technology. Historically, drivers were paid based off of trip distance and duration. With this, Uber flipped the script with something they called upfront fares plus destination. Upfront screwing. This new system uses a complex secret algorithm that weighs a bunch of different factors to set prices. On the upside, Drivers can now see their pay and destination before accepting a ride. On the downside, there's a growing concern that Uber might be pushing drivers into a corner, offering drivers who skip the less lucrative fares fewer rides, which creates a race to the bottom. Sherman isn't alone. Investment analysts are coming to similar conclusions. A forthcoming paper, spearheaded by a Wharton School professor, found that in New York City, Uber's take rate has increased significantly, while Lyft's has decreased. Last year, we published a video with an organization called Get Fair. They found that Uber's take during surge prices was over half. Since the introduction of upfront fares, Uber's profit margin has expanded. Uber disputes that they're taking more money from drivers, and we don't know for certain who's right about this, because Uber refuses to share the actual data. To paraphrase that Wharton professor, Uber's written response to all of this is essentially, you're not seeing what you're actually seeing. Your eyes are lying. Right now, Minneapolis politicians are actually listening to the research and drivers. They passed a minimum wage law for rideshare operators within the city. As a result, Uber is threatening to exit the entire state, arguing that wage regulations could make operations unprofitable. Non-stop threats, right? You've heard it many times in this channel. Other YouTubers are saying it, leave. They need to get out. If you are not willing to pay that man behind the wheel, get the F out of the city and the state. And this is what's happening right now, ladies and gentlemen. We are fighting back. Have you noticed protest after protest after protest, month after month? We're going to keep on squeezing them. This channel is going to keep on squeezing, right? We are going to go for the social media jugular. We're going to get it out there plentifold. Send your shitty offers and then appeal to the public, to the rider, to the politicians, to the legislators. Check this out. This is the trash that they're paying us. So as Len Sherman said, charging the rider more, paying the driver less. And remember how they fought back, right? The articles, again, they were taken down. They forced through threats from their attorneys that Forbes took it down. But Len Sherman stood by those findings and, and said the take rate is going through the roof. Ladies and gentlemen, this is war. We are going to end those non-stop lies, right? Because we are being taken advantage of and we're being screwed over and we are not going to allow that to happen. Not in this channel. Again, share the video. Get it out on Facebook. Put it in the Facebook um, channels, put it on, out on Twitter uh, or X, whatever it is, uh, make your own video, but we need to get this out. The, and, and, and notice the stock. The stock has come down a lot, right? Because they're just embroiled in all of these legal affairs. And force them to increase prices. We wanted to test that claim. Her team analyzed millions of rides across two similar markets, Chicago and New York. Both are densely populated major U.S. cities. And they're the only two cities in the U.S. that we're aware of that make data on fares at the trip level, every single trip, available to the public. Uber is forced to turn over that data 
by those governments. They're also a really good comparison because they have one major difference, which is New York has had a pay standard since early 2019, and Chicago currently does not have any kind of pay protection or pay standard for drivers. What we found is that over the four-year period after New York put its pay standard in place, fares in Chicago actually rose at a higher rate than they did in New York, which is the opposite of what you would expect if Uber's claims were true. This isn't the first time that Uber has misled the public about their business. A whistleblower revealed that when Uber was expanding across Europe, they paid economists to produce research praising the company. They then fed that research to journalists to support their cause. You can't trust Uber's claims because... You can't trust Uber's claims. Because we could write a book, just watch a few hundred of my videos, why we cannot trust this company. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to brawl. It's bare knuckles from now on, right? I'm not going to tolerate this shit. We are going to hit them hard and heavy with lawsuits and in social media. Let me repeat this. We're going to hit them hard and heavy with more lawsuits. Another one was filed today in Canada, $215 million. Australia, 300 million. UK, 250 million. We are going to hit them hard because the lies are going to end, right? This insanity of screwing you, the rider, the public over, right? Doubling your fares and, and, and putting us down to less than 50%. We're getting less than 50%. And David Risha comes out lying, oh, we guarantee that they make 70%. When all those bullshit external fees, the insurance scams, all the additional money scams, stealing tips, etc., all factored in, these guys are literally, I don't even want to say it. It's so upsetting. Let's carry on. They've too often been shown to be misleading the public. Yeah. Right now, Uber and Lyft don't release detailed data around driver pay, prices, and take rates. Instead, they flood the airwaves with talking points that run counter to independent research and their own stated strategy. I think, you know, policymakers should treat it like a negotiation that's happening via the press, which I know is uncomfortable, rather than, you know, a good faith response to public policy. Cities now face a crucial call to mandate that these rideshare companies open up their trip data. This would not only arm drivers with the knowledge of their earnings exactly. and strengthen their push for fair wages, it would give politicians and policymakers information they need to actually make a system that works for the city, not for the company. Thank you. I don't trust what Uber says. They have too much of a track record of misleading the public for corporate gain. Thank you. And drivers. This woman is powerful. She speaks the truth, right? They're afraid of the truth, my friends. We are going to amplify the truth. We are going to out the lies. Share the video a lot of information about what how the, the platforms actually work and we should give a lot more credence to what they say about what they're experiencing every day these companies need our cities cities are where they make all of their money they don't want to leave yes they're throwing their weight around but we as cities as the public as elected leaders should throw our weight around as well to do what we need to do for our, our constituents powerful powerful stuff what a powerful video the full video underneath the link like and subscribe to their channel because they have amazing videos and they're literally helping us because they're speaking the truth. Also want to give a shout out to our sponsors, Gig Rocket. The link is below. If you have been deactivated again by who? Wrongfully by Uber, by Lyft, by DoorDash. Uh, we have two teams of attorneys and paralegals in place. We go after the lost earnings and we file a legal appeal. We hit them hard, my friends. I filed over 4,500 cases against Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and Uber Eats. And I'm proud of it because A, we've got so many drivers back on the road, the link is below, and B, we've also put money back into those drivers' pockets. Why should a driver lose money or lose earnings because a rider wrongfully put in a claim, put in a statement that cost him or her their job. We fight back. You know me as a fighter, my friends. Um, I'm there. We'll keep the videos coming. Um, I think just closing your eyes like, oh my God, this crap, right? This crap that's happening is real and we need to amplify it. So 
push the video out. And again, thank you for such an amazing, powerful video. Facebook, put it in the groups. Tweet this out. Share the links. Grab the link and get it viral, my friends. We have to shove this in Dara's face. Thank you. God bless you all. And we're going to keep on brawling. Thank you.